Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 162 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating potential difficulties with equipment delivery and expansion of heavily calcified lesions. The patient was a woman who was found to have three vessel coronary artery disease and underwent bypass. However, there was only enough vein to bypass the obtuse marginal and uh, she was sent for PCI of the right coronary artery that did have a significant disease as well as heavy calcification. We can see here the severe disease in the mid. There are some lesions uh, as well further down in the mid right coronary artery. So we decided to use the radial approach. This is a 7 friends AL 0.75 guide. We want to have a strong support. Uh, wiring was easy using a workhorse guide wire. And then we did use uh, a Mamba Flex microcatheter, but could not get through the heavily calcified mid-right coronary artery. So wh what we decided to do here is to switch uh, for an atherectomy wire. We advanced the Mamba Flex as far as we could. Then we removed uh, the initial guide wire and we inserted a rotor drive floppy wire that uh, successfully advanced uh, to the distal right coronary artery. And then we used a 1.5 millimeter bear that is our preferred bear for initial uh, uh, rotational atherectomy. We easily went through the first lesion. However, we were unable to advance it past the mid right coronary artery. We did a prolonged um, multiple um, crossing attempts for a total uh, atherectomy time of seven minutes. But despite that, and despite increasing the speed of the rotational atherectomy to 200,000, we were unable to advance the burr through the mid-right coronary artery. You can see here, this is a very eccentric, heavily calcified lesion. At the same time, the patient developed chest discomfort and ST segment elevations. So we removed the rotablator, and then uh, we did uh, a 1.0 millimeter balloon that successfully crossed. But then uh, we tried again to advance a little bigger balloon that could not get through the mid RCA. So we downsized. We decided to use a 1.25 millimeter bear, and actually this one successfully crossed fairly easily through the mid RCA. We did uh, a few polishing runs that went well. We used the Mamba Flex microcaster. We switched for a wiggle guide wire. We were then able to deliver a 3.0 millimeter balloon to the mid RCA. And to our pleasant surprise, the balloon expanded nicely, suggesting that the plaque modification had been adequate. We then perform optical coherence tomography. There is a heavy calcification, as we knew. There were several fractures. And also more proximal in the vessel, there was an eruptive calcified nodule that was likely the area where we had difficulty delivering equipment. Dragoluting stents were placed all the way from the distal RCA to the proximal right coronary artery. And uh, the stents were post dilated with a non compliant balloon. This is the OCT after doing the post dilatation. And there is a good result. There's some area of malaposition here, but that's at the origin of a side branch. And then overall, the stents seem to be well expanded. So despite the heavy calcification, the stents expanded well. However, the patient, despite having TM3 flow, continued to have some ST segment elevation. And then when looking carefully at the angiogram and comparing it with the angiogram at baseline, this little branch, this small posterior lateral branch, actually had um, an occlusion. So presumably during the balloon angioplasty or the atherectomy, a small uh, fragment went down and embolized distally and occluded the flow into the small posterior lateral. A guide wire was advanced in this. It was too small to do thrombectomy. Um, but that uh, wire passage allowed restoration of TM3 flow into the branch. And this is the final angiogram. Again, TM3 flow. We have restoration of flow in all the branches. And the patient did well. There are several lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, when uh, the lesion is uh, balloon uncrossable, one of the potential treatment strategies is to advance the microcatheter as far as possible and then insert an atherectomy wire, ideally a rotor wire. There is, of course, the risk of the wire not 
going through, in which case we lost wire position. But often, as, as happened in this case, the guide wire may be able to go through, and then a thorectomy can often provide the solution. If the rotablation burr does not cross through a heavily calcified lesion, we typically increase the speed from uh, 140 to 160 to 180 to 200,000, do multiple runs, keep the duration of each run short and avoid uh, leaning heavily on the lesion, avoiding significant decelerations. And then if that doesn't work, one option is to downsize the bear. In this case, we went down from a 1.5 millimeter bear down to 1.25 millimeter bear. Despite uh, performing a therectomy for a prolonged period of time in the RCA, we did not have significant pericardia and we did not need to use a temporary pacemaker or aminophilin. And then finally, if ST elevation happens during a percutaneous coronary intervention, the question is whether a branch is occluded. So if we have a good flow in the major vessels, always look at the small distal branches to confirm that there is flow in all of them. In our case, there was a decreased flow in a small posterior lateral branch, likely because of embolization. When uh, we advanced the guide wire there, the flow was restored and the ST segments improved. Thank you.